I want to identify which dimensions still need to be added to the sketch to make it fully defined, so I will switch back to the drawing. I'll start by identifying any length dimensions that are missing. The first dimensions that I notice are missing are the dimensions controlling the overall width and height of the part. I want to add a width of 81 millimeters and a height of 57 millimeters, so I'll switch over to the sketch profile. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. And to set the width of the part, I'll click on the vertical line on the left and the vertical line on the right. And type in a value of 81 millimeters. I'll repeat this for the height of the part by selecting the horizontal line at the bottom and the horizontal line at the top and type in a value of 57 millimeters. Notice that some of the sketch elements, such as the elements on the left and the horizontal line at the bottom, have changed from blue to black, indicating that these sketch elements are now fully defined. However, there are still a number of sketch elements still shown in blue. Most of these sketch elements are arcs, so defining the radius of the arcs is the next step toward fully defining the sketch. However, if there is any question regarding how a sketch element needs to be defined, clicking and dragging that element in the graphics area will illustrate how the sketch is constrained. For instance, if I click and drag the arc at the top of the sketch, notice that the arc's radius changes and the endpoint on the left changes position. In order for this arc to be fully defined, I'll need to make sure that the radius and the endpoint position don't change. I'll switch back to the drawing to view the remaining dimensions. I'll take note of the radius dimensions for the three arcs in the sketch profile. The top arc has a radius value of 19 millimeters. The small arc has a radius of 5 millimeters. And the bottom arc has a radius of 29 millimeters. I'll switch back to the sketch profile. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. Select the arc at the top. Enter in a value of 19 millimeters. And the arc becomes fully defined. Then I'll select the small downward facing arc. Enter in a value of 5 millimeters. And finally, click on the arc at the bottom and enter in a value of 29 millimeters. It may seem a little strange that these two arcs are not yet fully defined, so I'll investigate how the larger arc performs when I click and drag its endpoint. As I move the endpoint back and forth, notice that the center point of the arc is moving along the angled line. This means that I haven't defined the height of that center point. I'll switch back to the drawing. And I can see that a dimension of 19 millimeters is used to set the height of the arc. I'll switch back to the sketch profile. Activate the Smart Dimension tool. Select the bottom horizontal edge and the center point of the arc. And enter in 19 millimeters for the height. Now both arcs have changed from blue to black, and the entire sketch is fully defined, which is confirmed in the status bar at the bottom of the SOLIDWORKS interface. Here I have a portion of the sketch profile already drawn, and the part has an underdefined status shown in the status bar at the bottom of SOLIDWORKS. The dimensions already included are applied to simple sketch entities, such as dimensioning lengths, angles, and diameters. Creating these dimensions is covered in another lesson. So in this lesson, I will primarily focus on adding a few remaining dimensions and any relations needed to fully define the sketch. To do this, I must identify which dimensions and relations are missing to fully define the sketch. I'll switch over to the drawing specifying this part's dimensions by holding down the control key and then pressing tab on the keyboard. Here I can see a number of additional dimensions are detailed in the drawing, as well as a few callouts for specific sketch relations. It is typically easier to fully define a sketch profile when the sketch relations are defined first, and then adding dimensions once all of the relations are in place. I will begin by adding the sketch relations I see in the drawing to the sketch I am fully defining. There are three tangent relations shown here in the drawing and there is also an implied relation that is not specifically called out. If I look at the arc that has a radius of 29 millimeters, I can see that the center point for the arc has been dimensioned with a height of 19 millimeters from the bottom edge of the part. However, there is no horizontal dimension, 
which means that this point must be coincident to the angled line. This means I will add four total relations to sketch entities in the drawing. I'll switch back to the sketch, and I'll begin adding the tangent relations. The first relation is between the angled line at the top and the arc it connects to. I'll select both of these sketch entities and click Tangent from the Context toolbar. The next tangent relation is between this horizontal line at the bottom of the profile and the arc connected to it. I'll select both of these sketch entities and select the tangent relation. The last tangent relation is between the two arcs connected together. I'll select both arcs and set the last tangent relation. The only remaining sketch relation is between the center point of the lower arc and the angled line on the bottom right. I will want this center point to be coincident to the line, so I will select the center point and select the line and choose a coincident relation. Now the center point will remain on the line. With these relations added, I will move on to adding the remaining dimensions to the sketch in the next video.